Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to focus on learning goal number nine. Again, we're looking at ways we can build on what we already know from Mendel and focus on some of the things that Mendel didn't know. Mendel didn't know about recessive and dominant lethal alleles and the ways that they predict or they change our predicted offspring ratios. So you can go ahead and follow along on your big ideas, page four, where we're talking about recessive lethal alleles. So a recessive lethal allele is caused by a loss of function mutation, or a null allele, as we learned about earlier. But a lot of times, these are tolerated in the heterozygous state. So having one copy of the allele, the organism still survives. But if they're homozygous recessive, or they have two copies of this allele, then they die. Now, when, even though an organism can survive with one copy of the allele, sometimes it does change their phenotype. So having two copies of the allele makes them die. Having one copy of the allele might make them look different. And so as a result, sometimes when we're looking at them, initially it seems like a dominant Mendelian trait. Let's look at an example together so you can understand why. So we have agouti and yellow mice. Agouti is the wild type found most common in nature. And we call it a genotype big A, big A. When you have one copy of the mutant allele, big AY, it's going to end up looking yellow. And when you have two copies of the big AY, big AY, they actually die. So take a second and try to perform the following crosses. So you can see why initially people might have thought yellow was dominant to agouti. Go ahead and cross that on your own on the space provided. Pause the screen till everyone is finished. At this time, I'm hoping each one of you has done three separate crosses and determined the phenotype ratios but you didn't, I'm hoping you did not include the mice that died in their phenotype ratio. So when you did that, you should have gotten these results. First of all, when you cross two agouti mice, they only have big A's. The only thing they pr can produce is more agouti mice, and all of them survive. When you cross two yellow mice, they, it, they're both heterozygotes. So you've got one, um, one out of the four would be big A, big A. Um, two out of the four would be big A, um, big A, Y, big A, looking yellow. And of course, one fourth die. But since I asked you to do the phenotype ratio with survivors only, you get this two to one ratio. And we're going to come back to that in a second. When you cross an agouti with a yellow, the only thing they can produce is agouti and yellow, which they produce both of them, and it ends up being half and half. Because agouti will always give one A. The yellow can either give a big A or a big A Y. And so that yellow parent determines which allele they get from that yellow parent determines which type of offspring they will be. And they end up getting half and half and all survive. But right here, if this was normal Mendelian, we would predict that we would see a three yellow, and normal Mendelian dominance, we would predict three yellow to one agouti. But instead, scientists saw a two to one ratio because some of them were dying and they didn't realize it. So this two to one ratio, they did their chi-square analysis and they realized there was a large enough difference from the expected results that there had to be a different explanation than just chance. And that's how they knew to explore further and discover that it's not that yellow is dominant. Instead, yellow is recessive lethal, where having two copies of yellow actually causes the offspring to die. So again, this is an example of recessive lethal alleles. Another example we have is dominant lethal. Now, sometimes just having one copy of an allele causes an organism to die. Many of you may have heard about Huntington's disease. This is a very sad disease where um, people die of slow, painful neurological death. These people have one 
copy of the allele that they inherit from either parent. Now I want you to take a second and think there's a place in italics there for you to write. With this dominant lethal allele, what has to be true in order for a dominant lethal allele to continue in a population? Pause me till everyone's had a chance to write something down. So I'm hoping at this point in time you came up with something like this. In order for a dominant allele to exist, the, effect, the people who actually die from this disease must die after reproductive age. Otherwise, people would die before they had an opportunity to reproduce and pass on that trait. For the example of Huntington's disease, most patients don't show symptoms before they're 30 or 50 years old. In fact, what we're finding now is that people actually get diagnosed from Huntington's disease many times by the time they're already grandparents. So imagine you're diagnosed with this disease, you are starting to exhibit symptoms, your family is dealing with that, recognizing that you have a deadly disease and they're helping treat you. At the same time they realize because you have this disease, now every one of your children has a 50 percent chance of also having that disease. So those parents have to make a decision, am I going to get tested to find out is this the way that I am going to die? And then looking at their children and wondering, will, have I already given my child this disease that I may or may not have even known that I had? This is where genetics counselors are very important. They help families come together and make decisions about whether or not they want to get genetic testing done for this and if once they find out answers it helps them realize how can I cope with this, especially since this is a deadly disease that we do not have a cure for, and how do I interact with my family members who some of them have positive Huntington disease tests and some of them don't. Because you may have a family of three children. One or two of them may have discovered through the tests that they will have the disease and the other child didn't. So this really affects the family dynamic and there's a lot of feelings of guilt in this process. So this is a, an important where um, genetics counselors become extremely important and it's a very interesting job which requires um, an undergraduate and a master's degree and many of you might consider this as a potential career path. So that is it for today on recessive and a lethal, I'm sorry, recessive lethal alleles and dominant lethal alleles. Go ahead and try some of these in your homework problems tonight.